uh, to speak on this, say, 15 or 20 minutes, uh, that we can still also ask a few questions. Pascal, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. Good morning to you all. Uh, thanks for the invitation. Uh, very impressed with, uh, with the program. And I, I sincerely regret not to be able to stay. And I intended to stay, which is really the case. So I, I mean it. Uh, so I think you're going to have a, a very good day. I'm, I'm happy to start the day. And um, I think you are an educated crowd, impressive crowd too. So I will uh, jump over the. I mean, the past, why we're doing this, uh, what has been done so far, try to focus on, on where we stand and, and where we, we, we're heading. Um, and, and actually, I, I, I would like to start with a question, uh, and I don't have the answer to that question. I, I, I try a few, a few possible answers. What the tax world will look like in about two or three years' time? So the, the, the first possible answer is much ado about nothing. I mean, all these governments uh, uh, did talk a lot about BEPS, did talk a lot about taking actions, uh, but uh, recovery is back. Um, they, have, uh, and they have talked the talk, they have not walked the walk, they agreed a set of principles which were not really binding, they have not really implemented much, and tax planning is at its best in, in a new renovated environment where people talked about it, nothing happened, and, and we keep going on. Uh, which is a possible answer, uh, and that may happen. I, I, I would see, however, in, in this option, a few, a few leftovers which, which could become difficult. Uh, you know, in French we would say this scrupule. Scrupule is, in Latin, this little stone that you have in the shoe. Uh, so at the beginning you don't really feel it, and at some point it hurts, and it hurts badly, and at some point you cannot walk uh, anymore. So maybe we, we would have some leftovers as, as scrupule. One of them being that Whatever happens on, on the BEPS front, uh, the world has changed. And it, it may be because it has changed that we initiated the BEPS project. Uh, not that much about fairness or a fair tax system, because I, I don't really know what it is. I know that it is unfair to have an outcome which is not an, an intended outcome. Uh, and, and that's probably why politicians uh, across wide variety of countries decided to launch BEPS. But uh, it's not that much about that. It's more about countries disagreeing on the basics. And, and the reason why the disagreement has increased uh, over the past few years is that the world has changed. Uh, the OECD 20 years ago represented, I don't know, 70% of the world economy. It's now probably at 55% of the world economy, uh, not to mention Europe which is even smaller and, and will be even smaller. And, and we have the big emerging economies. They have the economic difficulties, but if you look at the long term, actually they will weigh in even more than they currently are, except that these emerging economies are not OECD member countries. They are not EU countries, and they may become an OECD member country one day. They will never become EU countries. And these countries are not bound by the OECD standard. And uh, if the OECD standards on transfer pricing, on, on the elimination of double taxation, do not work, how come will these countries, which are what I call price makers from an economic perspective, meaning that you go there and you know the price to pay, or you don't go there, unlike many developing countries, which are intermediary uh, type of, of countries, which are price takers. I mean, they have to offer good tax systems and to offer the OECD principles to attract investors. China, they can, they can decide what to do. Brazil, your choice to invest or not to invest. South Africa, probably the same. They are probably in the, in, 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 in the average there. So all these countries uh, will probably even depart further from the OECD <coughs> standards, will have double standards. And uh, there, I would bet that uh, even if politicians are a bit less concerned with BEPS, you will have uh, less and less agreement and less and less consensus on our rules. And the world might not look extremely good for investors. Second, uh, in, in this uh, unchanged environment, 
We will still have country by country reporting. I wouldn't be that surprised that it's going to work. I wouldn't be that surprised that in some regions of the world, maybe the EU, it, it would be public. It's not what we advertise. It's not the agreement at the OECD. And, and we have provided for a mechanism which will secure the confidentiality of the information and will fight for that. But whatever happens on that front, there will be country by country reporting. And even though you would like to keep tax planning and change, which is not necessarily what you intend to do, uh, then the tax executives will have to talk to the CFO. I mean, there you can convince the CFO, you, you look at the savings, you look at what you have to disclose, and maybe the savings, the tax savings will be better. But when the CFO will have to talk to the CEO explaining that all the activity is here in Europe, that the employees are there in China, and that all the profit is in very small jurisdiction in Europe, I will not name any in this room, uh, or in Bermuda. Bermuda is always easier, even though they post a complaint every time I mention them. Uh, it's it's going to be difficult. Uh, to sell it to the CEO. And when the CEO will have to sell it to the board, it will be even more difficult. So even in an unchanged world, I think we'd better think of, of other solutions. So the, 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 the second uh, possible solution is that the recovery doesn't come. Unfortunately, it's not unlikely. Uh, we have the emerging economies which will continue to emerge, which will be disappointed because there is not enough agreement on changing the rules. Uh, and uh, you will have a number of governments uh, willing to take uh, populist measures or, or uh, upfront measures. And uh, the new world will be made of diverted profit taxes everywhere. Uh, you may have heard last week or two weeks ago uh, that uh, Joe Hockey, the treasurer of Australia, mentioned the idea of, of, of following up the uh, UK initiative of installing a diverted profit tax. And I'm pretty sure that there are a significant number of countries which are very impatient to move forward. And that's why we've launched the BEPS project. It's not to trigger these changes, as very often we are portrayed and caricatured, but rather to tell the member countries, please, hold on, wait. We can try to coordinate the action, fix all that together, so that then you will take measures which will be more efficient, instead of moving to unilateral actions, which are less efficient than coordinated action, and which can be disruptive, because we shouldn't lose sight of the overall goal, at the end of the day, we need to eliminate double taxation. It's all about the elimination of double taxation. But to eliminate double taxation sustainably, you need first to put an end to double non-taxation. Otherwise, countries don't believe in the rules to eliminate double taxation. But if countries move to unilateral, uncoordinated measures, we're back to uh, long-term double taxation. That's for a number of countries which would take unilateral actions. That's for the EU, which might decide on its own to take some protectionist measures or so, which would not be great. That's obviously the case of the uh, big emerging economies, the BRICS, uh, which might decide then to uh, work on their own. And of course, at the end of the day, when the US Congress is a bit less dysfunctional, it may happen one day, they would pass a, a tax policy reform, fix the system, in a way which would not necessarily be consistent with the rest of the world. You know that they are almost alone in having a world, world tax uh, system, while all the other countries are, are territorial. And then you may have two systems which will have difficulties in coexisting. Uh, so the world of unilateral, tax, uh, unilateral action is a world of, of multilateral taxation, not, not even double taxation, but, but uh, multiple taxation. Is it great? Not great. So you can see that the third option is the one I'm here to sell uh, to you uh, today, which is the BEPS uh, approach. Um, and I'm paid to believe in it, uh, but even if I was not paid, uh, I, I, I would still think that it's the right way forward, <laughs> even though I recognize that it may have introduced some form of disruption that uh, too successful a brand is a bit dangerous because then you have tax administrations using that brand to make adjustments, which is exactly the opposite of what they should do because the BEPS brand is about saying, 
Well, all this tax planning is legal, so what you need is to change the law, not to uh, additional audits. Uh, but, but in spite of, of these uh, uh, slight disruptions, uh, I think what we're trying to achieve and what we are achieving is uh, keeping countries together with one set of standards and trying to fix the standards to sustainably eliminate double taxation in the long term. So what would be the changes? And where are we heading at, at the end of the year? Uh, we're a bit more than halfway. Uh, we have another six months to go, meaning that we've worked for 18 months. I think we've achieved some significant uh, progress already, as displayed in Brisbane at the G20 uh, Leaders Summit uh, when we presented seven actions. Uh, and I'm confident that uh, in, uh, on the 8th of October uh, this year in Lima for the G20 finance ministers meeting, uh, uh, we'll have the 15 consolidated actions uh, together with some substantial changes. What are these changes? First, and if I take a, a high level picture there, uh, we'll have a much better cooperation among countries unprecedented level of cooperation that we shouldn't lose sight of. Even when you're extremely nervous with discussion drafts that you think are too confusing or are not clear enough or do not provide certainty enough, think of what tax cooperation was in this era of corporate income tax five years ago. We had the BRICS emerging as a separate group of countries likely to go to the UN to have double standards. That was the obsession of my predecessor, Jeffrey Owens, who thought that there would be double standard. Now the BRICS are on an equal footing in the OECD and they intend to stay. The post beps environment, I think, is made of 90% of the world economy, 9-0. The OECD countries and the G20 non-OECD countries, with the developing countries queuing in. It's not that they want to, to, to have their own set of standards. They are begging for, for getting in the OECD and we're doing our best to move there as quickly as possible. Better cooperation which will help bridge the gaps between the tax sovereignties. You know the work we've done on hybrid mismatches. Now, if there are new hybrids which are not covered by this draft, um, this model draft legislation, I mean, good luck if you want to venture there. I, I think hybrids are over. I mean, this arbitrage which has been tolerated for decades is coming to an end. That's over. Uh, on harmful tax practices, interesting work which I think we've achieved on transparency of rulings. The EU might go slightly further, but basically that's the agreement which was reached last year uh, in the context of the BEPS project. Patent boxes that has been mentioned and more to come more countries to be covered and the um, uh, criteria to be, to be revised. So I think we're moving to better cooperation. And even in the areas where there will be no minimum standard, like CFC or interest deductibility, there is a frame now which, which has been designed. And within that frame, countries will move. The US will pass its tax policy reform, and a number of European countries will strengthen the CFC legislation in accordance with EU law. But you can see that there is a frame. Interest deductibility, countries cannot move on their own. And they know that a global formula of allocation is, is extremely attractive from an intellectual perspective, but it's not practical. So we'll probably have something like an income ratio uh, which will be fixed, uh, not a minimum standard, but a framework with a stage process with countries knowing that as the others will be moving in the same direction, they can do it and they will probably tighten the ratio on the way forward. So better cooperation there, uh, which will limit uh, the, uh, uh, which will limit the, which will limit the uh, um, uh, opportunities to play one sovereignty against the other. We are fixing the rules, and I think that's the second lesson uh, that we can draw, and, and I think it's, it's being done. Uh, tax treaties, uh, the, the, the era of, of treaty shopping is over. Uh, so if you're, if you're in this business, it's time to reconsider, uh, because I, I really think it's over. Um, uh, we have a minimum standard which is being established and which will be monitored, which will be implemented. Uh, the uh, commissionaire arrangements, uh, 
as well here if people don't see the writing on the wall too bad but uh, uh, it's it's time to realize that uh, the abuse of article 5 of the model tax convention mm -hmm. is also over and uh, for those who would think well we have another two decades because before all that is translated into uh, tax treaties because it takes two decades to change 3,000 bilateral treaties we'll have the multilateral convention uh, uh, ready for signing by the end of 2016 we're in the process of collecting the uh, expressions of interest. We are above uh, 50 countries today, and it's increasing on a daily basis. So I think we'll have more than 100 countries negotiating this multilateral convention to streamline the implementation of the BEPS action plan. Finally, on transparency. On transparency, I think we'll be in a better place in terms of understanding, in terms of intelligence. Action 11, that nobody's paying attention to, is extremely important in terms of collecting the data, in terms of estimating uh, how much is at stake, and that's significant. Uh, we're now have a pretty good sense of, of, of the figures, and, and they show that BEPS is, is significant in terms of revenue threat. Uh, and um, uh, we, we will have a better understanding on the way forward, which will give more ability to governments to react more quickly rather than waiting another two decades to realize, oh, by the way, the earning has been stripped. Country by country reporting, I've mentioned it, that's, that becomes real. 2017, 2018, you will have this information flowing from one tax administration to another tax administration. We, this will be a game changer for your profession, I think. And that's extremely important, to restore some more responsibility of all the players. And finally, and I put that in transparency, even though it, it's horizontal, arbitration. Uh, arbitration or serious dispute resolution mechanism. And there, I think we'll have a good agreement across, uh, across the board from all the countries in terms of, of having a political commitment to eliminate double taxation, moving away from we endeavor to eliminate double taxation, which drives me nuts. I don't know what they just endeavor, what they don't commit to eliminate double taxation. They need to do it. We'll have a coalition of the willings to do arbitration beyond EU. It's interesting that a number of EU countries don't realize that they are legally bound by arbitration through the multilateral convention on arbitration. When, when we talk, even at the OECD or at conferences, they say, no, we don't want to do arbitration. You're bound. It, it's, it's an obligation, except that this multilateral convention is not implemented properly. So we're trying to make sure that, that the commitments which have been taken and the legal commitments are properly implemented. And we'll have this coalition of the willings to be, to be the leaders, to be the early adopters there. But we'll have for the others. India will not do arbitration. They clearly stated it. Or uh, China. China is doing some opening now to do some form of arbitration. If you, if you pay attention to what Liao Tizong uh, says, uh, it's quite interesting to, uh, to see that there is an opening. So you will have a group of countries committing to a minimum standard and to be monitored against that minimum standard. And the monitoring will be done by the tax commissioners of the firm on tax administration, more than 40 countries, all the G20, all the OECD countries present. And they will be reporting to the G20 finance ministers. And I can tell you that is going to be a game changer. So on the one hand, we're fixing BEPS. On the other hand, we're organizing a real elimination of double taxation, either through effective arbitration or through a minimum standard which will be monitored. So these are significant changes which Whatever the level of agreement is, I should have mentioned transfer pricing, but of course the three actions will be delivered and, and, and will just give more sense to the Amsterdam principle which lost some of its meaning, uh, uh, meaning because of, of the way it was implemented by both tax administrations and, and taxpayers. So we'll provide a good set of clarifications there to make sure that we look not only at the contracts, we, we won't depart from the contracts, but where the contracts do not reflect the reality, you, do, you need to look at the reality. That's as simple as that. The Amsterdam principle was not designed to locate 2 trillion US profits in Bermuda. It's as simple as that. It was not designed to put uh, in a cash box uh, intellectual property. I mean, that's not what the economies designing the Amsterdam principle back in 1928 decided upon. And we need to change that. Or we're going to lose the Amsterdam principle. I'm not a believer, I don't care, except that I don't see any form of formal reapportionment. Not even in the European Union, or I wish you good luck, uh, maybe it would be great, but I don't see this happening anytime soon. I, I, I hope I'm wrong, but 
I'm not sure I'm wrong. Um, so many changes will occur. But what I think is also quite important in terms of a framework is that we'll have a larger community. We'll have all the G20 and all the OECD countries remaining on an equal footing in the post-BEPS environment. And I think that is something extremely important if you look at the long term. Can, can we develop tax cooperation? Can we develop sustainable solutions just with a group of countries, with other countries living on their own? Probably not. We need to be inclusive. We also need to recognize the differences. Developing countries are not in the same position as EU countries. And that's why we're developing toolkits with the UN, with the IMF, with the World Bank. We need, uh, we need to cooperate all together to make sure that we deliver for developing countries. And they have their own concerns. We also need to offer the platform to have the other debate. I mean, all the countries agree that the uh, profits shouldn't be located in no tax jurisdiction. They all agree on that. But once we've removed the profit from the no tax jurisdiction, they will fight again. There is nothing new there. They've been fighting for the past 50 years. They will be fighting for the next 50 years on source or residence taxation. We just need to offer a relaxed platform to have this discussion. And this discussion at the end of the day is to be solved bilaterally through the bilateral tax treaty. So we'll have the G20 countries, I hope, remaining on an equal footing. We'll be more inclusive with the uh, developing countries. And then we'll have some challenges uh, ahead of us. Uh, one clearly which will remain, even though it will be largely dealt with, is uh, the digital economy. <coughs> How do we deal with that on the way forward? And maybe here VAT will be the answer and be reassured that there will be a VAT package in full accordance with what the EU is doing uh, in the uh, delivery of the BEPS action plan in, in, uh, in October. Uh, we'll have uh, the issue of keeping the balance between all these countries, between source and residence taxation. And we'll have to make sure that we, we, we don't shift from double non-taxation to multiple taxation. And that's why Action 14 on the elimination of double taxation is extremely important, only to the extent that we can fix the deficiencies in the lack of cooperation on the one hand and in the existing instruments on the other hand. So am I optimistic that something will come out of that? Yes, still, it's extremely difficult. Uh, I thought that two years was too short. Now I think it's too long. I wish this would be over next month to go on vacation. Uh, <laughs> but we have another six months to go. Countries are nervous. They are negotiating hard. Uh, but they are negotiating. And most of them, if not almost all of them, are waiting for the agreement to be reached before taking measures, which will not be unilateral measures, but coordinated measures. Thank you. Thank you, Pascal. I think it's very reassuring that uh, double taxation, or prohibiting double taxation, is still, after all, the main purpose of the whole exercise. And of course, double non taxation and double taxation are the two sides of the same coin. Now, we still have, I think, about 10 minutes uh, to shoot a few questions uh, to Pascal. So who would like to, to take the floor and start? Everyone is in agreement. Yes, please. <coughs> Hello, Bill Dodwell from Deloitte. Do you see a post-BEPS new organization responsible for world tax, essentially an enlarged OECD, but including all those other countries? The answer is no. Uh, it's a straight answer. Th there is currently a debate uh, because you, you, you may all know, or you should all know that uh, there is a very important summit in Addis Abeba uh, in Ethiopia in July, which is the Financing for Development Summit. Every 15 years, the UN fixes goals for development and, and there is a pre-conference, a conference prior to the summit, which will be in September on financing for development. And, and in, that, uh, in that environment, uh, a number of NGOs or, or countries are advocating a world tax organization, uh, which could be the UN or which could be part of, of, of the UN group. Uh, yeah, a, a new WTO, world, world tax organization. I, I don't think this, this will happen. Uh, I don't think this will happen because first, a number of countries are against and you cannot do that without unanimity or without consensus. It's more than consensus there, it's unanimity. So 
large countries are against that, so I don't see this happening, very practical. Now, if we move to a more theoretical approach, would it be a good thing? I, I fear that given that tax is at the core of sovereignty, and sovereignty is, is the main features of states in the international environment, the, the more you put countries as, as sovereign states which, which can say no, as is the case in the EU with unanimity, the more you give them the opportunity to say no. And, and you can have the legitimacy debate. I'm not that much interested in that because I'm very pragmatic. It's true that the UN is, is fully legitimate uh, as, as a general assembly. I mean, if you take the UN group of experts, there are only 25 countries. Is it more legitimate than the OECD G20 or than the Global Forum on Transparency, which includes 126 countries on an equal footing? Probably, yes, the UN is more legitimate, but is it the right question? I mean, the right question, I think, is how do we make progress to make sure that governments can protect their revenues and that players, I mean, the uh, investors, can invest with a, a good level of certainty? How can we set up rules where countries bind themselves? So the more you say that's going to be hard rules and, and hard law and you need to agree by unanimity, the less you achieve. Instead, if you say, well, let's take it the soft way, the soft law manner, then we, we can do better. Of, I mean, we will all be better off if, if we agree incremental changes uh, and they are only morally binding, you achieve more. And that's why we've, we've been able to, to lead that work so far and it's, it's working. So a World Tax Organization, uh, clearly I, I don't see this happening and if it were to happen, I'm not sure it would achieve much. Um. Yes, uh, Chas Rachari, Head of Tax at ACCA. Uh, Pascal, you touched on the BEPS Action Point 14 dispute resolution. We're going to have a tsunami of changes hitting the world tax landscape, and BEPS Action Plan, Plan Point 14 is probably the most important part of the BEPS project in terms of making all this work. But how do you see the consultation paper I thought was quite weak in terms of saying maybe, should, and how do you see making mandatory binding arbitration work in a timely manner, within, say, 12 months, member states agreeing, how do you actually see that uh, part of the BEPS action point being implemented effectively so that we don't have multiple taxation, which you touched upon as well? Yeah, th th thanks, thanks for these. Um, first 12 months, I mean, you're extremely ambitious. I, I would say 24, which is the best practice so far, which is the timeline, including the multilateral convention on, mutual, uh, on, on arbitration in Europe. Um, there are several layers. The first one is for non-EU countries, and maybe also for EU countries, and, and there may be a conflict of norm that, that we need to reflect upon, but the multilateral convention that we are developing, and which will be open for signature at the end of 2016, will provide for a wide range of arbitration. I, I say wide range because if China wants to sign on permanent establishments and not on transfer pricing, so be it and maybe one day they will join transfer pricing. So we'll, we'll try to make it as open as, as, as possible to get as many countries as possible with probably some form of baseball arbitration which, which makes countries feel like they are not completely giving up their sovereignty because it's the last offer. I don't know baseball. I've never played baseball. It's like cricket. It's, it's, it's gibberish to me. But, but I understand it's the last best offer. So uh, that's what probably will prevail because there is some appetite for that. And it will be binding with a mechanism to appoint arbitrators after the time has elapsed. I, I guess that's what's going to be the outcome of the negotiation, but I cannot preempt it. So that's going to be uh, one uh, uh, road with, uh, the, uh, G, uh, with the coalition of the willings. So a large number of countries, and I hope all the European countries, and probably the US, Canada, Australia, I hope Japan, Mexico, and some others to say, we, we would like to do arbitration. Some form of political statement, and then this reflected in the hard law instrument by the end of 16. Then you have the second layer. 
which is the European Union countries to turn this multilateral convention into something effective. And I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, in June, when the Commission will come up with a package, there, there will be something about that. Uh, and we're more than happy to help. The third layer is about those not willing to do arbitration. And we need to take that into account. I mean, the, 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 I could pay you lip service to say all countries should do arbitration. And if they don't, they're bad. But that will not be helpful. So better to find a way to get these countries move. And I'm confident that these countries want to move. Brazil, India, China, South Africa, many developing countries, which are not yet ready to do arbitration, they recognize that the way they eliminate double taxation is not good. And I should have started with the European Union members. I, I, I used to be in a previous life a competent authority. Uh, I closed the case in 2004, which had been opened in 1973. 30 years, crazy. Uh, and, and there were hundreds of cases. And I know that in the EU, a number of countries have hundreds of cases, which is not good. So we can do very practical things. Just think of the fact that for a tax commissioner, the competent authority is extremely unimportant from a tax commissioner's perspective. You have tens of thousands of people. You need to collect the taxes of your country, and you have a bunch of guys, three or four, who are doing stuff that clearly, I mean, they're, they're first giving up rights to tax, so as a commissioner you may not be that interested, uh, prima facie, and second, it's, it's not important. Now we are making it important, because they will have to report to the finance minister, who will have to report to his colleagues and to the leaders of the G20 through a monitoring mechanism. That's, that's a game changer, because the commissioners will then put the resource. They will ask for returns, and the excuse of, we're sovereign, we don't want to eliminate double taxation, in many cases where actually it's, it's just that it's too complicated or too long or whatsoever, that's going to change. And we will be reporting on that. So that's how I see the Action 14 coming out in September, in a way which I think will, will ensure the balance of the overall project. Okay, thank you, Pascal. Uh, I think I have to uh, make sure that you're catching your train. Um, and uh, would like to thank you very much. I think we wish you uh, quite a lot of success in getting all your countries um, coordinated in their approach, because if they just take part of it, you know, if they just take those where they can take on the taxpayers, and, and, and that would be just half the solution. Thank you very much. <laughs>